So you're moving here to the Dayton area and you're considering moving to Hoover Heights and you're wondering where in Hoover Heights I should move to. Well, my team and I came up with the differentiating parts of Hoover Heights and we're going to go through all nine neighborhoods to tell you what the differences are. So make sure to stick around to the end because the last one is the most affordable place. So stay tuned. What's up everybody? This is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here at eXp Realty right here in Dayton, Ohio. If this is your first time to our channel, I'm a military vet of 14 years now, a military spouse, and I moved once every one to two years and always had to find some place every time I went and there was just no information about where I was moving to. Thus, we came up with this channel. So if you are moving to this area, you're gonna have every bit of information about the surrounding areas and about Dayton that we can get our hands on. So make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that little bell so that you're notified every single time we got a new video coming out honestly we get tons of phone calls emails text every single day about people moving to our area and we absolutely love it so if you are thinking about moving to our area again you can call text email send us a little paper airplane <laughs> whatever you need to do we got your back we're moving here to the Dayton area okay so let's talk about Hoover Heights today. So if you've seen some of our previous videos, you, there are some great different things that you're gonna love about this area. In particular, we have shopping. There's tons of shopping to do out there. You're gonna see strips of different uh, mini malls and actual malls, uh, if not in Hoover Heights, but just right around that area. There's lots of restaurants. If you like the fast food, there's tons of that, but they have all sorts of different food from Mexican all the way up to Indian. There's tons of stuff all the way around here. So if you got a taste bud, then we could probably match it in this area. <laughs> also the proximity to things. In Dayton, in our area, there are just tons and tons of great highways. So no matter where you end up going, you're probably about 20 minutes away from your next destination. So say that you're working at uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, you may be 10 to 20 minutes depending on gate traffic to get to your work location. If you are working downtown Dayton, same sort of thing depending on traffic. Uh, uh, you could be in your location in 15 to 20, 25 minutes, depending on where you're at. So the highway system really allows you to get around. And of course, if you do travel in and out of town quite a bit, the airport is just a quick shot over here to the west, and you'll be able to get in and out of there pretty easily, and the commute just isn't that bad. All right, so also some good things about the area is there's a good mix of white collar and blue collar workers here. So it's a very diverse community. I think what really brings that in is because of the military installation. You're gonna see a lot of military people in, in that community just because of the proximity uh, to the base, as well as military contractors, retirees, that's what they ended up doing when they got out, those sort of things. So uh, you're gonna see a nice diverse uh, community that really takes pride in their um, ownership of their house, they take care of their yards, their house, they keep the upkeep, they just have a good sense of community. And speaking of community, there's just very friendly people there. It's one of those communities where you could be driving around and wave at a random person and they'll wave right back at you. It's, uh, it's, it's actually really, uh, really, really nice. Uh, let's talk about housing since this is a real estate channel. <laughs> we do have most of the housing that was built in this area was mostly built up in the 1970s to about 1999. So you're going to see those type of houses in this area. However, there are spots that are built from 1940s all the way up to about 1969. Now those older homes will drive a lower price and typically a lower rent as well, uh, but the rent isn't as effective as it is to, uh, to actually purchasing a home. And you'll see this as we go through. So let's talk about those communities. There are nine different neighborhoods inside Hooper Heights, also known as Hoover, <laughs> if you talk to anybody in that community. Uh, 
So we're going to go most expensive. So the most northern and probably the biggest community that's out there. And as further north you get, it, it's a little bit more sparse, a little bit uh, more urban versus suburban. Uh, is the Brant West Charleston area. Now, the home prices up there are going to be the most expensive. It's going to be around $240,000 ish, and your average rent is going to be around $1,165. Now, these houses will typically be about medium sized houses, what those are like three to four bedrooms and usually bigger lots, which could drive the price up a little bit more. Moving on to our next community, we have the Chambersburg Road and Belfonte Road. The average home prices in this area is going to be around 225,000, and your average rent's gonna be around 920. So one of the cheaper areas for rent, uh, you're gonna have anywhere between medium to large size houses, so your three to four bedrooms, your small apartment buildings um, that, that will be kind of sparse throughout there as well. You are gonna see some of the homes in this area that were built in 1940 to 1969, which I think is what brings down the rent uh, in this area. Nice part about being part of this uh, community inside Hooper Heights is it actually encompasses the Carriage Hills Metro Park and that place is really nice. They've got all sorts of trails, biking, fishing. Uh, there's actually an old sort of barn and things that you can go, lots of history in this area. So definitely check that out when you're in that area. Next is you have the Brant Pike Shoal Road community. Uh, the prices there are around 172 and your rent's gonna be around 1560 on average. Again, you're gonna see medium to large size houses in this community, three to four bedroom plus. You're also gonna see townhomes here. Actually in this community will be from 2000 and up and you'll see those sprinkled out through this community there's a, a very very high demand for this area it's very very clean very kept up even to the rest of those community standards so your average vacancy in this area is like zero percent <laughs> so if you are trying to get into this area if you're trying to rent or trying to purchase uh, things are flying off the shelf so to speak so make sure to contact your real estate agent and get them out there uh, looking for you so that you can get an offer in on that like pronto interesting part about this community as well is that it has the highest swiss and czechoslovakian ancestries in the united states uh, it's actually one 0.6% of that population actually has an ancestry. Kind of cool, right? See what I tell you about diverse. <laughs> All right, let's move to the Miami Villa uh, neighborhood as well. We have the average home prices there being around uh, 139.8. And your rent's going to be around 861. So one of the more affordable rent areas. You're going to see medium-sized houses, small studios, which are like two-bedroom studios typically, uh, a small apartment buildings, and that's what you're going to find in this area in particular. As we move on to the Harshmanville Road and Chambersburg Road, uh, that community in there, the home prices are around 119, 119000 and your average rent is going to be around $1,010. In this area, you're again going to see medium-sized homes, small studios, and you're going to see some small apartment buildings as well. In this area, they do have the Spring Lake area, as well as the Herbert Hoover Community Park. So our next area is going to be in the Branded Pike and Layden Lane area, where your average home prices are going to be around 114,000, and your average rent is going to be around 1,080 dollars. This typically has or has medium to large size homes and small to large apartment buildings. The next community that we do have is the city center, which is where the city center is. <laughs> the average home prices in this area are around $111,000 and rents around $1,122. dollars you going to have medium to large size homes, small to large apartment buildings inside there. In this area, you do have the Wayne High School as well as the Kitty Hawk Mellow Dog Park. All right, let's move to our next community. You have Sulphur Grove. Now, Sulphur Grove has uh, home prices around $107,000 and rents around $1,003. 
We have medium single family homes. We're gonna have small to large apartment complexes. And this is that area that encompasses the Gary Sherman Park, which is pretty nice to go out and hang out in too. So we're at the last one. We're coming to number nine, which is the Brandon Pike and Powell Road. This is the most south of Hoover Heights of all the communities where your average home price is going to be around $100,000 and rent's going to be around $1,193. Now, typically because of the rent being a little bit higher is because of the smaller places aren't as available and it is a little bit older of an older community as well, which means that you're, you're only gonna have the medium to large single family homes that, that encompass in this area. So not a lot of apartment buildings. Uh, there's also the Thomas A. Cloud Memorial Park so going out there in this community could be very advantageous for you. So that's all the communities that we do have. If you have any questions about these communities specifically, please leave them in the comments below. If you do live in any of these and you want to give your insight of one to the other, we love that interaction. So again, please leave that in the comments below. If you are interested to moving to Hoover Heights or any of the surrounding communities, feel free to reach out to me and my team. Again, you can call, text, email us, whatever you feel like, and we'll be able to at least get you the information that you need and uh, be able to help you find that perfect place. Okay, again, I'm Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here at eXp Realty, and we'll see you in our next video. Take care.